This is Lavatera bicolor. Some call it Lavatera maritima, and it's in the mallow family. Um, this is a pretty popular large shrub, and I've used it for many years. I used to use uh, Lavatera thuringiaca and Barden, Barnsley. Um, they were so short-lived I stopped using those plants. But Lavatera bicolor, uh, I've got one now that's about nine years old and still going strong. Um, so let me get into some of the pros and cons of this shrub. I mean the obvious appeal is this beautiful flower, this uh, five petal, uh, it's kind of a soft lavender color with a purple throat and um, just a beautiful beautiful flowering this is in April and it's starting to do its big show so it's more of a its heaviest bloom is in the spring if these are in full sun I find that they bloom virtually all year I've got one in full sun and one in a shadier location and the one that's in sun uh, has blossoms on it virtually all year I'm in a warmer inland valley during the summer but it gets quite cold where we are during the winter we so our temperature range here is probably from the mid 20s degree Fahrenheit in the winter uh, up to uh, the low 100 degree Fahrenheit during the summer. Um, so this is a very fast growing plant. They ultimately reach about seven to eight feet tall and um, about the same width, maybe five to six feet wide, but easily six feet wide and frankly both of mine are seven feet wide so um, I've seen this listed as narrower than that but I think you'll find even just looking at these photos these are at least six feet wide that you're looking at here and they've been pruned so they're only about five feet tall so here's what happens you plant this plant um, five gallon one gallon they're so fast it really doesn't matter and within one year they've reached between four and six feet tall and four and six feet wide. They're very fast growing. Um, but that's a problem. What I teach my clients is to tip prune these as they are growing so that they develop a strong wooden core that will support the plant. The problem we run into is this wind comes in in the spring and or even in the fall depending on when you plant it the wood is so soft from growing so fast that there's no support and the plant gets ripped apart by um, rainy stormy weather. So if every 18 inches or so what I recommend is that these get pruned and then everywhere below the cut uh, it, it forms wood and that that develops a wooden structure in the inner core of the plant that better supports it than if it's just left to its own devices. So um, I know that sounds a little complicated and there's a whole video on pruning this plant but it's because a lot of people like it for the flowers but if you don't treat it properly you'll be disappointed it'll flop all over the place and probably get broken and give you problems. Um, so that said you see it here used in a grouping along a fence I kinda use it as an individual specimen shrub they're quite large as I noted so um, I put I like it in kind of a corner next to a fence it will hide the fence and it will give me a nice blossom to look at uh, most of the year. Um, these are drought tolerant once they're established. They're moderately deer tolerant. I've seen areas where deer left them alone and I've seen areas where the deer uh, will chew on them. So um, maybe see what your deer think about it if you've got deer issues. And as I mentioned, it can handle a wide vari variety of temperature ranges. Um, and that's probably it. It's an evergreen shrub. Oh, so what you see here, these plants, because they grow so fast and they bloom a lot, they uh, consume a lot of nutrients. And I would treat these like a rose plant in that if something grows that fast, it's consuming a lot of nitrogen. That's what makes plants grow and that's what gives leaves their green. And if you notice here, the leaves compared to some of the other photos, they're quite small. Uh, that's because this plant is probably drained of nitrogen. Uh, a lot of people do not fertilize their shrubs. They kind of put them in, maybe give them some food, and then forget about them. If you get a plant that's blooming a lot and growing a lot, it's eating a lot. 
and this thing's probably tapped out. So what I recommend is that if you uh, follow a fertilizing regimen, really pay attention to plants like this that bloom a lot and maybe hit them with miracle Grow a few times during the growing season or an all-purpose balance uh, fertilizer to re keep producing those blossoms but also to fill in these leaves. These little leaves that you see here that are only a couple of inches across, if you look at some of the other photos of the fuller plant, those leaves will get four inches, five inches across if the plant has enough nutrients and, and it's happy in that regard. So um, there's a lot to know about Lavatera, but those are the main points. If you're going to use it in design, I kind of use it as a specimen plant. This looks great, by the way, next to um, Budlia Pink Charm. They bloom at a similar time, and the lavender flower, see how full the foliage is here? Uh, as I was saying, the lavender flower looks great next to the pink flowers of the Budlia. But as you see here in this photo, that um, the the leaves are much fuller in this photo as you s compared to the live photo you saw earlier so just know that when the plants getting what it needs this is more of what you can expect in terms of the overall appearance of the plant and that is lavatera bicolor